the horse, the people, the color, pageantry, and atmosphere, the history and memories, the challenge, opinions, and arguments, the wagering, the winning. That is why the jockeys, agents, trainers, owners, and analysts in this special night school video presentation love this game. The Horse Player Now team of Joe Christofek and Brian Natto talking about why we love this game. And Brian, I don't know about you, but I got hooked by the mental aspect of horse racing, figuring out the puzzle, trying to determine what horses are gonna win, visualizing races, the mental challenge, the wagering part of it. And if we're right, and we all know this game is about ego, you get paid for it. So talk a little bit about the mental challenge and what first drew you to horse racing. Well, I think that's a big part of it, Joe, the fact that your opinion can be validated financially. When you when you look over something, you you put the puzzle together and you get the winner, I think there's something to be said for that. And it is it is a little ego driven too. I'm smarter than you. Uh, I had the winner, you didn't, and it's now it's uh, my pocket's better off for it. Yeah. Most definitely. You can take this game very seriously. Uh, you can play at home via the ADW. You can come to the racetrack. But I don't know about you, when I'm going to invest in the races and there is a difference between investing and gambling, I need privacy. I need to be able to focus, pay attention to what I'm doing, and really cover every aspect of it before I arrive at my final decisions and invest my money, what I think is going to be wisely. Absolutely. You don't want distractions. You want to know everything going in. You don't want too many people around that are going to distract you. If you need to pay attention to a race, things like that, I want to be locked in a basement, so to speak. I want to have everything in front of me, all my notes, my trip notes, things like that. I just don't want to be distracted by, there's a lot of distracting things that can happen at the racetrack, as that we might get into. So I, I need it all in front of me, and I need to be focused. You want to watch the post braids. You want to watch the tote action. You sure. want to watch the will pays. You don't want to miss any of these things. Right. So if you're going to play the races seriously, you really have to pay attention. But there's another way to enjoy the races, and that's the social way, bringing friends to the racetrack, sure. people that don't know as much about horse racing as we do, and making it an entertainment type of day, which can be just as fun, if not more fun. Sometimes. Right. Hey, you've got your places like Saratoga, Del Mar, Keeneland. They're great atmospheres to enjoy the races. They're also great atmospheres to have a cocktail or two, bring some friends, you know, and just unwind, enjoy a day at the races, and we're going to get into it. Right, two vastly different scenarios when you're trying to play to make a lot of money or when you're enjoying a day at the races. No better place, in my estimation, in the month of January or February than to enjoy the races than the Tiki Bar at Gulfstream. You've got the picnic tables here. You're right down by the rail, right down by the racetrack, so you can go watch the horses in the post parade. And Brian, when I'm going to enjoy a social day at the races, I like to have all of my handicapping mapped out, all of my handicapping done. I don't have to put in that much work in order to still make logical bets that have a chance to win. Maybe play a show parlay with my friends sure. or pool their money and play a pick five and try to go for a, bit, for a big score. But there's a lot of different social ways that you can enjoy it while still betting on the races. As yeah, well. when I'm going to the races with a friend, with friends, I, I'm, to be honest, it may sound silly, but I don't really care if I win or lose because I'm going to bring a designated amount of money that I'm just going to have fun with. If I win, great. If I lose, it's, that's okay too because today's not the day I'm looking to make a killing at the track. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to enjoy a cocktail or two maybe and just get some sun at the racetrack and just enjoy everything that the racetrack has to offer. So on those particular days, I'm not going to expand my bankroll. I'm not going to get too crazy at the windows. I'm just looking to have fun, win or lose. And when you're bringing newcomers to the racetrack, that's part of it too. You want them to enjoy the day so that they're willing to come back and they invite their friends to the racetrack, take them down to the paddock, explain things to them that are happening on the racetrack, maybe teach them how to read the past performances, show them how to make educated wagers. The more people enjoy their experience at the racetrack, the more apt they're going to be to come back and bring their friends, which grows the fan base, and that's what we're all about. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the, there's a lot of fun to be had at the racetrack. I think people get intimidated by it. Uh, you know, it's tough to read a program if you've never read it before. It's tough to make a bet if you have no idea what's going on. So you, you know, you bring a group of people, they get a winner early in the day and they're hooked for life. And that's really what it's all about because there is so much fun to have at the racetrack. You just need to get, get out there and enjoy it. Well, I think our job is done for the day. What do you say we go grab a beer? Yeah, as soon as you're ready, I'm ready. All right, well, that's why we love this game. We hope you love it too. We're talking about what is so great about thoroughbred racing and all the different breeds in horse racing. Kate, I know racing's been a big part of your life. 
Yeah, Jeremy, and when you have followed something and done something for your whole life and you still love it, you know that it's truly special. You've uh, stumbled onto the right thing. And I, I think part of it for me has been the opportunity to actually earn a very good living doing something that I enjoy, uh, but also all the different places it's taken me to and the different uh, walks of life, so to speak, that I've been able to inhabit throughout the game uh, that also make it unique and keep me coming back for more. You know, I think you can make a good point there because at the small level or the big level, it's kind of one and the same. And I think that's one of the reasons I love the game so much. As a horse player, you know, five to one pays the same at Sam Houston as it does at Saratoga, at Delaware as it does Del Mar. I mean, there's something fixed about the pursuit, the handicapping challenge, and the puzzle that plays at any venue. And the same for the people and, and for the sport itself, because you can walk into any racetrack, literally in the world, and you capture the same emotions and the same slice of life. And I, I think that's the other part of it that makes it so great, that um, it's almost a comfort factor that when you walk in the door of any racetrack in the country, big, small, major race day, minor weekday where there's nothing really big going on, you still have that same feeling of excitement, anticipation, expectation, and hope uh, that maybe you're going to come home with a winner, and you're all in it for the same reason. Everybody there is looking to try to solve the puzzle. You know, you talked about that it can happen anywhere kind of mentality. You and I were at Presque Isle Downs this year on the night school tour, and, and I think one of the neatest things I've seen in racing happen that day when the young rider, uh, Taylor Rice, was on her first career horse riding for her family, uh, you know, multiple generations of the Rice family. We were there on an otherwise obscure Sunday night doing some fan education, and it was probably one of the most uplifting days I've been at the racetrack in the last decade. And, and so that just goes to show you that something special can happen at any time. Well, and you know, I think people often accuse horse players of being jaded, but the truth is that you saw the very best part of being in the game and of being a horse player to see the reaction that the crowd had to her, uh, not just rooting her on through the finish, but then embracing her, so to speak, when she came back from the winner's circle. And, and that's true pretty much everywhere you go to. And it also strikes me that uh, the fact it, for me personally, that she was a female in, in kind of a male-dominated sport, but an arena where um, anybody has a chance, and people appreciate people who work hard and who do a good job and celebrate that. And that's another thing that I absolutely love about the game is the opportunity to compete on an even playing field with the boys, hang with the guys, so to speak, but also the girls that there is no advantage to age, to uh, you know, where you come from or what you've done before. It's all about how you play this game. And people respect anybody who puts the time in and especially those who can come up with a winner now and then. And the game has this wonderful ability to reinvent itself and reinvigorate itself. You know, you get a new crop of horses every year. You've got that run up to the Derby and, and there's always hope. And, and the game could just make you feel good when you see something great. I remember being at the Derby a couple of years ago and I almost checked myself in the hospital. I had walking pneumonia. I was feeling awful. The worst I've ever felt in my life. And then on the undercard at Churchill Downs, Amazombie and Shackleford just threw it down in the stretch. And I'm getting goosebumps right now just talking about it because it was one of the most amazing races I've ever seen standing on the rail. And, and I went from sick to excited. And there's just something about the game that can lift you up when you see a great performance. And it can be any performance. It doesn't have to be a stakes race, although those have probably provided the greatest thrills of all because those horses do lay it on the line almost every time they go out there. But, you know, even when you see a, a kind of an inexpensive claiming horse, but that comes back time after time or race after race and you follow him throughout his career um, and you see one of those gritty performances, that's something that kind of lifts you up as well and sort of inspires you. And I, you know, that is the other great thing about the game. The fact that it's humans, but it's also horses and it's also animals and getting a chance to see all that is, uh, is tremendous, especially if you're a horse lover like I am or an animal lover.
are standing in line, and they're off. Sunday Silence breaks alertly. Easy Goer was off a step slow toward the inside. Slew City Slew, Blushing John and Present Value. And they're passing us now for the first time. Slew City Slew is out to take the early lead now. And he's opened up a quick lead here of two and a half lengths. Blushing John is second on the outside. Present Value is third. Sunday Silence is rating in fourth position. He's six lengths off the lead. Me Selecto is seventh. Four lengths back to Easy Goer. He is ten lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew as they move into the first turn and the trailers are crypto clearance and western playboy slew city slew and he zipped the opening quarter in 22 and two fifth seconds a brazen display of early speed in this mile and a quarter classic blushing john is tracking him as they make their way on to the back stretch now sunday silence poised on the outside third present value to his inside then me selecto Easy Goer is yet to do his best running. He is still nine lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew. He's five lengths behind Sunday Silence, and now he's beginning to roll. They've run a half mile in 46 and one fifth seconds. Slew City Slew weakening on the lead. Blushing John has been tracking him all the way. Sunday Silence bracing for the oncoming power of Easy Goer, who's right at his neck, and the stage is set with three furlongs to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Blushing John taking the lead, three-eighths of a mile out. It's Blushing John in front. Sunday Silence on the outside, gearing up now. He's left Easy Goer two and a half lengths behind. They're coming to the top of the stretch, and Blushing John is under a hand ride. He leads by length and a half. Sunday Silence, a threatening presence on the outside. Easy Goer is set down, and he's put to a fierce drive. Coming to the final furlong, Sunday Silence surges to the front. Blushing John trying to fight back. Easy Goer with one final acceleration. And Sunday Silence holds on. And he wins by a desperate neck. Easy Goer was too late. Not enough to win it. And it was Sunday Silence in a racing epic. Little Bold John entered the 1989 General George Stakes, having already become one of the first Maryland breads to earn $1 million. But just when it appeared the versatile seven-year-old gelding had lost a step, he summoned his back class to rally past four graded and eight minor stakes winners and win the seven furlong President's Day feature at 12 to 1 odds. Well, what stood out about Little Bold John the most was his heart. I mean, I've had horses with more talent, but never with one with the heart. I mean, he, he knew what he was doing, and he wanted to win. He wanted to win as much as we wanted him to win. Bred by Hal Claggett and trained by Jerry Robb, Little Bull John compiled a remarkable 38 for 105 record with $1.95 million in earnings and 25 stakes victories, which ranked third all-time in North America at the time of his retirement in 1992. Part of racing's allure, a great part of it, of course, is the racehorse, and, and Little Bull John just exhibited all those, all those noble characteristics. Little Bull John won stakes races at six tracks during five consecutive calendar years and at six distances, spanning six furlongs on turf to one and a quarter miles on dirt. A good horse is the easiest kind to train. As Eddie Gaudet would tell you, that horse was trainer-proof. So wherever I wanted to run him, he showed up. It didn't matter what type of race or how far. And they're off. Or emblem away well, but E Dubai got the jump on him, firing right off the mark. Came home on the outside, and Medallidoro comes on through. E Dubai is the leader as they race for the first turn. On the outside, Medallia Doro, and War Emblem is in between horses. He's running second now, and he'll go on to challenge E. Dubai into the clubhouse turn. Perfect trip, takes to the inside in fourth. Falcone rides the rails in fifth. Came home, is hustled up on the outside from sixth now. Mike Smith wants to get him close to his six lengths from front running E. Dubai. Macho Uno is now running in mid-pack, and he's seventh. Harlan's Holiday is eighth, Milwaukee Brew is ninth. Hawkwing is unhurried, a bit wide going into the backstretch. Four lengths back to the stretch runner evening attire 
And the last of them all is Dollar Bill, and he is 12 lengths from the front runners, and they're moving right along here. A testing opening half mile by E. Dubai in 46 and 3 fifth seconds, and War Emblem is chasing him in earnest. He's under a hustling ride there by Espinosa. And Perfect Drift is just coasting along in third. Medallia Doro fourth with five furlongs to go here. Toward the inside, Bob Pony bottled up in fifth. And then a Tarlan Taure, sixth as they approach the far turn. Macho Uno is moving up methodically on the inside and came home, is coming up empty. Hawkwing is now beginning to circle horses on the far outside. Hawkwing's in gear. So too is Milwaukee Brew arounding the far turn. And the Derby winner's in front. War Emblem has taken over. But Medallia Doro is right there in his throat latch. And Valpone comes charging on through as the field turns for home. Valpone on the inside is taken over. The leader at the top of the stretch is leading Medallia Doro behind in second. And War Emblem is spent. And farther back, it is Milwaukee Brew, who's now third, followed by Macho Uno fourth. They're coming down to the finish, and it's going to be a huge upset. 40 to 1 on the wire. Valpone scores in the classic. He wins by a half a dozen lengths. Medallia Doro finishing in second with the photo finish there with Milwaukee Brew. Why do I love horse racing? Well, if you love horses, the animal, like I have since I was a little girl, you will love horse racing. If you love people that are come from every walk of life and are interesting and intelligent and put in long, hard hours seven days a week and have to get used to losing 75% of the time so they really savor and appreciate each victory, you will love racing. And if you love the thrill of competition in sports like I do, you will love racing. And here's another thing. If you love to maybe place a little $2 wager on your favorite number or your favorite name or your favorite colored horse or your favorite colored silks and then win some money back, that's a bonus. You will love horse racing. Those are just a few of the reasons why I fell in love with this sport at an early age and I still love it today. Well, I started going to the horse races when I was in high school and I, I think I was first fascinated by two things. The continuing thing over the years has been the majesty of the animals, uh, and the more I learn about them, the more I love them. In addition to that, uh, I, I really liked the handicapping aspect because uh, it's sort of the eternal mystery. Uh, you get a set of givens that you try to learn as a handicapper, and then you try and uh, interpret the mysteries that come in between the lines, and it, it's endlessly fascinating to me. Uh, and through a combination of circumstances, I was able to learn about uh, owning a horse and racing a horse. I was able to learn about uh, breeding a horse. I was able to learn all the various aspects that, that go into this. And, and, you know, we've been, knock on wood, really lucky. We, we've, we've managed to make a little money racing and we've managed to make a little money breeding. And uh, really the most important thing to me as I've learned the various stages and aspects of the game is that I've made lifelong friendships out of each of those different aspects. I've got you know, lifelong friendships with folks who uh, work in the business, like uh, you and other folks who do uh, the, the media side of things. I've got lifelong friends who are trainers. I've got lifelong friends who are farm owners and breeders. Uh, it, it just has really widened my circle of relationships with people I, I really have, uh, have come to love, and I'm very grateful for that. Well, to me, horse racing is one of the most fascinating endeavors that I've ever come across, and to have been able to make it my career, I feel very, very fortunate. I got involved with it when I was just 11 years old and was immediately hooked, have been following it every day ever since I first set foot in Del Mar Racetrack back in 1971. And the thing that grabs me about it is just the pageantry, seeing the beautiful animals come over, the anticipation behind who's going to win the race, the jockeys. To me, they're the most courageous athletes there are in sports. And then there's the participatory aspect of it when it comes to being a handicapper, trying to figure out who's going to win, evaluating the odds to see who's going to be good value, and that great rush that you get when you're right. I mean, there's nothing better than when you're right and when you get paid off. And the nice thing is, if you're wrong, a half hour later, you get a chance to be smart again. That's what I like about horse racing. I love horse racing. Um, I mean, how do you not look at this? How do you not? These animals are absolutely so beautiful. They're so powerful. Um, and yet they're so sensitive and they're, they're all individuals and, you know, they, they're, uh, um, 
it's just something I, you know i've never needed an alarm clock you know I, I jump out of bed to come to work and and if you call it work to come to the barn and and uh, i just feel extremely blessed and um absolutely love it i, I uh you know it's something too that i started at a young age you know coming to the races with my father so it's you know started with great uh experiences as a young kid and and uh uh, it's just gotten better uh, with each day being out here. I absolutely love it. One of the reasons um, that I have, was attracted to horse racing in the first place was the horse. But the more, the closer that I became to the sport and the more that I got involved with this sport was to, to be able to get to know thoroughbred racehorses and to know how much they actually love racing each other, whether you ask them to or not. They enjoy that. And the horses that don't aren't really part of the game. They don't end up being great racehorses or good ones and they, they sort of find other careers or they do something different. But that's really not part of their world. And so you can't make a horse run if he doesn't want to. It's like asking somebody to you know play volleyball that doesn't like volleyball. If you don't like volleyball, you're probably not gonna be good at it and you probably won't play. And horses that don't wanna run, don't play. So the, the incredible heart and desire, the, the passion that comes with my end of believing in this sport comes from them because when they go out there they give you every single part of what they have inside them they don't know how much money they're running for they don't know what grade stakes means they don't care they're just doing it because they love to and because they know I asked them to and that's so incredible I mean it's it's probably for me more about knowing that I can take a horse condition it to a level that I believe is going to surpass the rest of the horses in that field and then today is race day so it's test day this is just a test to see that horse against that field and my ability to have brought him into a race that's going to meet that expectation and I think that people who enjoy competition at any level people who enjoy watching that kind of talent these are Olympic level athletes being able to compete with one another every day and we wait four years for the Olympics we can watch horse racing just everything the excitement of the day is the you know, the circuits, all the graded stakes. Um, it's just all good for me. You know, I think I read somewhere 70 some percent of the population in the world hates what they do. I get up every morning, I absolutely love what I do. I can't wait for the phone, to, you know, the phone will start ringing. In the old days we had to go run everybody down, but now if somebody wants you, but I can't wait to get engaged and my mind start working and trying to figure things out. It's all good for me. And then the afternoons are just, you know, that's the, the end of the product. That's what you've done. This is your, the results. That's, that's special, you know. It's a beautiful sport. The animals are beautiful. It's exciting. You know, there's a lot of pageantry involved. There's, you know, it's a nice place. It's an, it's an event. People can get dressed. They can come and eat. You know, they don't have to worry about winning or whatever. Just use it as entertainment. Come out and have a good time, you know. It it's, should be good for everybody. I love horse racing. It's fast, it's fun, it's exciting. You're up one minute on a roller coaster, you're down a dip on the next, but you know if you stay on it long enough, you're going to be right on top of that Ferris wheel, right back on top. Because when you know horses, you know horses. It's fun to see them, to realize that they eat, live, breathe. They have personalities, they're exciting. And if you love any kind of animal, you've got to watch horses. Horse racing is something that's been in my blood my whole life, but you go out here this time of morning, see the horses, it's the way you compete as you get old like me today. But it's just something that's been a family tradition, and uh, once it gets in your blood, it'll never get out. It's, uh, it just brings you, it humbles you. It's uh, something that uh, some people love to go fishing, I love to go to the racing. Well. It's, it's so exciting, it's so much fun. Uh, I didn't know anything about horse racing until I met my husband and um, he said to me one day, he said, I've always wanted to have a race horse and I said, well, let's do it. I didn't know what we were getting ourselves into and we started with claiming horses and you know what, I got so excited winning $4,000 claiming races. Our, our first horse was named Small Victories. So we started out with our small victories. He won the first race we ever had. And I thought, this is kind of easy, isn't this something? Then found out how tough horse racing can be. 
but how how wonderful it is. You know, you love the animals, you love to watch them run, you love to hear those thundering hooves as they come around to the finish line. And um, it's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful sport. When you see how Smarty Jones impacted other people, how special does that make you? Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Do you know, I still get letters from, from young people. Um, there's a book out called Dear Smarty that's fan letters from young children to Smarty Jones, and they must have been re released again this last year. And so young fans, 10, 11, 12 year olds, started writing letters again uh, to Smarty. And uh, the letters were then sent on to me. And uh, so he is still impacting young people. And he certainly made a big impression on the industry here in, in Pennsylvania. You know, he, he just did one, worked wonders for uh, racing and breeding here in Pennsylvania. I love horse racing because of the horses. I love the horses and I like the competition. Uh, but the other thing I like about horse racing, it's a great equalizer. You may come out here and stand shoulder to shoulder with a billionaire and he'll have a 10,000 bet, you have $2, but you're all cheering for the same thing. And I mean, you'll stand and talk to him, you'll have something in common. I, I always tell all the people who come to the races, it is a great equalizer. Everybody's on the same playing field. I love horse racing because it's, it was either this or get a real job. So I just love it. And uh, there's nothing like coming to the barn every day and you have 40 horses looking at your face. You know, they can't talk, can't explain anything to you, and they're, they're just happy. And uh, I just love working with horses, and it's, just, it's been a passion and a love of mine. And because uh, I love these horses, they love to run, they were born to run, they love to compete. And uh, just watching them compete is so uh, thrilling and exciting. And it's just, just a great feeling, all in all. All right, Kate and Joe, you guys asked me a great question. Why do I love this game of horse racing so much? I want to tell you, there's two different ways. I love it because the animals out there every day, it's almost like a monopoly game. You're trying to figure out what they want before they even want it. And the other thing, come on, look, glory, look at it. It's great out there. When I walk in a paddock, every horse owner I ride for, it's pretty much somebody. You know how many times I walk into restaurants, the guy owns the place and this place. Anybody who owns racehorses, this is pretty cool. And I've met so many people in this game that I'm just blessed to know and go to dinner with these days that that's why I love this game. Well, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I love horse racing. My dad introduced me to it uh, back in Boston way back when. Um, I, I think this is going to sound crazy, but for me, it's intellectual stimulation. And that, by that, I mean I've been in the game a long time. I'm still learning about it. Um, it's, it can be wonderfully uh, rewarding. It can be awfully frustrating. It's very, very hard. It's very, very difficult. But, you know, I, I think just trying to grasp the nuances of the game. You know, some people like doing the Sunday crossword puzzle in the New York Times. Me, I like picking apart a racing form. It's just in my head that uh, it's tough, and um, I like tough things. So, I mean, that's kind of been my, my interest in it. And, of course, you get rewarded if you're right. And, of course, I do like, enjoy the spectacle of the game, no doubt about that. But I just like breaking it down and, and, and looking at it from an analytical point of view. Well, horse racing gives you that instant gratification. You know, it's... And there are as many as 10 to 12 events a day. And when you go to the racetrack, there are a lot of things about it that I like. The camaraderie and the friendship that you make with other people there. Uh, you know, if you have an argument with somebody about who you like, you can settle it at the windows. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing about it is that I really admire uh, the competition on the racetrack. And it's you against... You know, as opposed to what some people think, it's you against the other person there. That's what paramutual uh, gambling is about. And you can get some tremendous payoffs. Uh, you know, there are thousands of dollars to be won in a single afternoon at the track if you can manage to hit one of the big gimmicks there. And you can take a, a relatively small bankroll and turn it into a big bankroll if you happen to catch a good day. Well, I got a long story. My grandmother, when I was five years old, cut a deal with me that if I would go to church on Sundays, that she would have the ponies come to the house so we could ride. And then my grandfather, when I was eight, said that he'd take me to the races. And then I learned how to read a pedigree by the time I was 10 or 11. So, I mean, through and through, I've always been crazy about horses and horse racing. And even when I graduated from college, I told my roommate I, I needed to get a job. And he said, well, what do you love? And I said, that's easy. I love horse racing. Always have. Well, I got into it simply because of the love of horses. I guess I'm very passionate about 
the animal themselves, and and uh, it, it it was something that you know started uh, just loving the animal and loving the game and loving the competition, and obviously it it, it uh, eventually turned into a to a business and a way to make a living. But it didn't start out that way. But I, I think to this day I'm still as passionate about the horses themselves and and the training and being around them and. I love the feel and the smell and everything about them. So uh, I, I think that that's the biggest part of it for me. Well, why I love horse racing is a bit of a loaded question. I grew up in it uh, from the tack room in Barn 18 at Laurel Park. Uh, my mom put my crib <laughs> in there. And so I grew up around the horses my entire life. It's really inherently bred into me um, to really love this sport. I love the entire competition of it. Um, there's nothing more thrilling than being connected with a horse. I also gallop horses, and my dad's a trainer. So when his horses run, the adrenaline is just pumping through me, and there's no better feeling than seeing standing in that winner's circle and getting your picture taken with your horse. Uh, and that is just why I love this game so much. I've been around this game for over three decades, and what really turns me on about horse racing is the people, the fans, the participants, owners, trainers, jockeys. That's what really gets my juices flowing. And all that translates into being really excited about coming to work every day, about working around horses and uh, the connections, whether it's from a groom on up to a super powered owner like Maggie Moss, who runs a lot of horses here at Prairie Meadows. Well, I like being around the people and that really gets me thinking that, well, it's going to be fun to handicap these races. It's going to be fun to wager on these races because I get close to the people here. I get a chance to get inside their heads and figure out what's going on. And I know that everybody's out here trying to win the races, but I know that uh, different people have different ways of approaching the way they train, the way they enter horses, and uh, the way they try to be successful. So if I can get a little bit closer to them and really get inside their heads and figure out what's going on on a daily basis, uh, it makes me a better handicapper and also a better horse player. So it starts with the people. It goes from there. I've loved horse racing all my life. I'm one of the lucky ones where my father brought me and my brother to the races a long time ago. Not everyone has that opportunity. I know when I was four years old and I saw Secretariat win the Triple Crown, win the Belmont Stakes by 31 lengths, that I was going to be hooked even at that young age. But nowadays it's a little different. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways uh, there's a lot of ways to come out here and have a good time. That's what I love about horse racing. There really is something for everybody. You're outside, you're, you're watching the horses. Every race gives you a new chance to see a horse you like. Maybe you're gonna bet the colors of the silks. Maybe you're betting numbers. Maybe you're not betting at all. But to see the horses competing, beautiful animals, betting with a chance to win, good food, good people. It's just the place to be. And I, I will love horse racing since, since birth till the day I die. I love horse racing because it's, uh, for one, it's gave me a good living. The feeling of winning, the getting on these animals and getting to know them and working with them as a team, trying to win, the, win races, it's just a feeling that you can't explain. It's just a great game. Well, I love horse racing for one reason. Uh, I don't think I could do anything else. <laughs> so for me, it's easy. I mean, that's about, you know, that's the truth. So I'll take it from there, that's it. Looking for a fun and easy way to learn more about horse racing? Night School, Tuesday nights. Enjoy access to top racing insiders via chat, video, and radio. Night School caters to fans at all levels. Miss a class? Read the archive. Night School, Tuesday nights. See you then.